Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is gonna to be another paint with me. Yes, I know, two in a row, how about that? Um, my job ended early today. Um, I predicted it would because in the notes on the job sheet, it said two hours. So I was able to get done, take a breath, and then I thought, let's do a paint with me because I was having some coffee and looking through the Facebook groups and there was a question in there that said, what part do you hate most about cross stitching? And there was like a hundred comments. And I said, ooh, that's a good little topic to chat about. But we're gonna chat about some other stuff first. So yesterday, my job, and it's one of my things on my gratitude list for yesterday, my job ended two hours early than they predicted. So I was done work by six o'clock. I was so utterly thankful for that because if you remember yesterday was a very long day for me got up early went to my dad's fixed his printer we'll talk about that more in a second and um, yeah it, it was a really long day because I had been up since about 4 15 that morning so we were able to have dinner. We actually wound up ordering Chinese. Are you kidding me right now? I dropped the wax container upside down on the carpet because of course I dropped it upside down. Okay. Is there hair all over it now? No, not really. Okay, so yeah, we, um, we wound up ordering Chinese because we were thinking we were just going to be fending for ourselves. Like I was going to have ramen, you know, he was going to, I don't know what he was, Bill was going to have, but we wound up being able to, um, wow, that is really stuck on there. <laughs> Usually this is not that sticky. So yeah, last night, um, I did stitch for a little bit and I promise you I will be doing a face to face video soon where you can um, see my progress. By the time you see the progress, you're gonna be like, you got so much done! Because it's been, you know, a couple days since I've showed you my progress. So, I actually ordered a few diamond painting pens yesterday. I know, like I need those, like I need a hole in the head, right? But um, I had actually donated a bunch of the ones I had from like a long time ago. And I have um, a rack now that holds them and I had spots open and I said, it's been a while since I bought a diamond painting pen. So I went on Lassen Lathworks Etsy store and bought two of his pens. And then I found another one from another seller. His pens are reasonably priced. I think I paid $15, $20, I think. You know, I, I have paid like really expensive prices for pens, but when I look at it now, I have a hard time paying $45 for a pen. Just just me. Um, and then I found another pen that was glittery and looked cool and it was only like $13. So now I have, the racks will be filled. Like I have a rack, two racks that each hold five pens. So I have 10 pens all together. So when I get them in, I will show you guys because the Lass and Lathworks one's already shipped because he had them already ready. They were in his Etsy store. So I will show you those. I also, I have my sneak peek diamond painting coming from Diamond Art Club, which I will probably have to have that video done by next week, I'm guessing. She didn't give me any, I'll have to message her and say, when does this have to be up? But, um... I bought two diamond paintings yesterday. I know. <laughs> well, one, I'm going to blame McKenna because me, her, and Jill, McKenna set up a little group for us three, and we talk about diamond painting and stitching and everything. But it's mostly for us to talk about our diamond paintings. And she posted a picture of, I think it's Christine Karen, is the artist, um, Forest Sprite. I've had my eye on that one for a while and I just never pulled the trigger and I went in there and it said there were only a few left, I think. Was that that one? Maybe not. But I was like, you know what? I really like it. 
I'm going to get it. So I bought that one. And then a little while later, I received a notification that Rainbow Flower Power was back in stock. And I jumped right on that because when they come back in stock, I don't know how many they release or how many they have, but I wasn't taking a chance because that's been out of stock for quite a while. I love that diamond painting so much. It's huge. It is really big, but it has six AB diamonds and it looks amazing done. I've seen it finished and it would look fantastic in here on the, in my craft room. So got those two. So I have three diamond paintings coming, which you guys will see all that. So Bill and I, Bill did call the attorney that um, he knows and we are getting our wills done on Monday. So I am glad about that, that it's going to be done because I think I'm going, I'm going to be off work on Monday. We've had quite the week for work. And I had mentioned to my boss yesterday that, look, if you take a job on Monday, I'm going to have to stop because our appointment's at four o'clock. And, um, you know, we have the details. I'm sure there's going to be things that are going to come up in talking with the attorney that we didn't think of. I, I, I like to say I thought of quite a bit. And, you know, it still gives me, I still have like dread and anxiety about Bill passing before me and just dealing with all of it, just dealing with everything. Um, and I, I really stopped last night and tried to think, what is my greatest fear with it? You know, I, when I was reading my Bible, and, you know, what it boils down to, I think, my greatest fear is that I won't have enough money to live out the rest of my life. I think that's my biggest fear with the whole thing. Now, I should be fine because I will, you know, Bill has a pension that he's going to be getting, which will transfer to me if he would pass. And then Social Security, Bill will have more Social Security than me because Bill has made more than me over his entire lifetime. So, you know, I'm pretty sure when a spouse pass, passes, the other spouse, I think I'm right about this, can choose whether to take their spouses or to keep theirs. Do you know what I mean? Like whoever's is higher. And, you know, between those two, and Bill does have a life insurance policy that I'm the beneficiary on, between that because um, I'm not trying to get into too many personal details here, but um, Bill wants to leave something to his daughter, which is the largest piece of our will and the thing that I really wanted to get hammered out. So if that time would come, there would be no contention or issue or anything like that. So, and that involves, um, you know, selling that whatever house we're in and she gets some of those proceeds. So, um, yeah, we had to lay it out like if Bill passes before me, if I pass before him, if we both pass in some freak accident because that's happened, and just different little things like that. Um, you know, we don't have investments. We don't have a whole bunch of stuff. The house is like, and our vehicles and his boat are our main assets, so... Yeah, I just, when I, or I, I didn't realize that our neighbor's death across the street was really going to affect me as much as it did. Um, it, it really did. And I realized, though, reading my Bible really helps. It really, really helps because think about the circumstances that the people that wrote those books in there faced. I mean, Paul wrote, was it, whatever book he wrote, Philippians. He was in prison when he wrote it. I mean, I think about that and I'm like, these people have faced extreme circumstances. And then when I also stop and think, everyone goes through what I'm thinking of. Everyone goes through, most people, the passing of their parents and having to deal with their estate and losing a spouse and dealing with that. And you just have to take it one day at a time, one step at a time, one thing at a time. Now, and I told Bill, I said, you know, I'm the kind of person is I'm like, go, 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 get it done, get it done, get it done. Because um, 
I'm not someone that like sits on things like I want it done. So I feel like now, obviously, I don't know because I've never lost a spouse and had to deal with that. I don't feel like I would be in this deep, dark hole of depression and wouldn't be able to take care of things, but I have no idea. Like I said, it's it's very scary when I think about the end of my life. You know, if I live to a good old age of, you know, 85, 90, whatever, that I literally will be alone. Um, you know, because you would think by that time, uh, my both my parents will have gone. Every family member I have will be gone. Because really, right now, I just have my mom and my dad and my mom's brother. There are some, um, you know, aunts and uncles on my dad's side, but I haven't seen them in like five or six years, and I, I don't really talk to them. Because remember, I didn't meet my dad until I was 32 years old. So I didn't grow up with that side of the family. Um, and I do have a brother who I'm not close to at all. He's two years younger than me. And then I have my sister. So um, I'm hoping to have, you know, continue having a relationship with her as she proceeds into adulthood once, you know, our parents are gone. And um, But I think also a fear of mine is that I become ill or sick and I can't take care of myself. That's a very frightening concept. Um, but yeah, because there is going to be a point in time where ugh, I am not working. I, I plan on retiring when I can get social security because I need something. Hopefully this channel, YouTube will still be around and I'll still be doing that. I'll do this until I absolutely can't anymore or it's not around, you know. But yeah, the, the fear is, I think about it, the end of my life. Because, you know, my stepdaughter has a mom. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I am going to be by myself. But who knows? You know, we don't know what comes down the pike when Bill and I move or wherever we live or let's say Bill passes and I sell the house and I move into an apartment or a condo or something like that. Maybe I develop a network of friends in some community and you just don't know. You you can sit here and play what if all day long, but you really don't know the people that will come into your life. I mean, when I think about the friendships I've developed due to this channel, I would have never imagined. I would have never imagined all of the wonderful people that I have had online friendships with and then met in person that if I messaged them and needed help, they would help me. You know, so I, I try to just live today. That's all you can do. That's absolutely all you can do. Make the best decisions that you can. Be the best person that you can. Enjoy what you can. Yeah. But yeah, that, that stuff has definitely been on my mind as of late. So last night, okay, so went over my dad's. I told you I fixed the printer, did all that. Um, my gratitude list for last night. So I really have been enjoying sitting down at night, reading the Bible, and doing my list then. So first I want to give two th um, thanks to people that did super thanks. Um, Patrice Lemon. Is your last name Lemon or is it like Lemon? Please tell me how I need to pronounce that. And then Janine Leonard. So both of you, thank you so very much for giving the super thanks. So I had seven things on my list from yesterday. Um, number one, that I was able to fix my dad's printer. Like I said, I will chat more about that in a minute. Number two, my job did not go until 7 p.m. Number three, I was able to stitch a bit. I did get quite a bit done on the stitching yesterday. Number four, I was able to do a paint with me and get some diamond painting done before work. I was very thankful for that. Number five, Rainbow Flower Power came back in stock at Diamond Art Club. Number six, Bill. Um, I was grateful for being able to have dinner with him and have a good evening, and he will always listen to me grouse about work. I really, really try. I've really tried here in the past, you know, two months or so to not complain. 
and especially not complain about work because that does no good. But sometimes you just, when he says, how was your day? Well, things have happened. So, but he'll always listen to me. And then number seven was I had written my job tomorrow, meaning today is only supposed to be two hours. And it was, it, it was only like an hour and a half. So I wrote down, so I was reading Philippians yesterday and I actually finished it. Um, Philippians 2.14 says, do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining and questioning and doubting. Easier said than done, of course. Okay, so this morning, I was really tired from yesterday's events and all of that. I didn't get up today until almost 8 o'clock. My job was starting at 10. I didn't have too many morning things to do. Um, I, you know, I don't have to empty the dishwasher every day or make Bill's tea every day, so I didn't have to do either of those things today. So really, all I had to do was laundry and banking and check email and stuff like that. So my dad calls. Now, I'm my dad calls me a couple times a week just to say, hey, good morning, how are you doing? He proceeds to tell me that the printer is printing, but that it's printing, the font is printing smaller than it usually does. And I said, Dad, when I left your house yesterday, the printer was printing fine. He said, I know. He thinks my stepbrother, because my stepbrother works at home sometimes and uses his printer, he thinks my stepbrother may have done something and changed something. He said, although he tried to change the font back and still printed small. <sighs> so I said, well, I can come over today when my job is done because I know it's going to be over earlier. And he's like, well, nobody's going to be here until much later in the afternoon. Because my dad is not computer savvy at all. And trying to show him something and have him remember it is extremely difficult. And it is just almost virtually impossible or very difficult for me to try to explain over the phone how trying to troubleshoot something. And... I'm a little bit at my wit's end. I don't want to be like that because it is my father. I know if I needed help, he would help me. But when I talked to Bill, he was like, you know, this is going to start becoming an everyday occurrence. I'm like, I don't know. I said, but I feel like when I go over there this time, first of all, I'm going to suggest to my dad because the only thing that my dad really prints out are his invoices and it's really simple. I'm going to suggest to my dad that my stepbrother purchase his own printer and hook it to his laptop so he won't use my dad's. Um, that's an option, I think, that I don't think has been brought up to anyone. <laughs> and um, I'm going to try to have to show my dad how to troubleshoot some things. Because what if I wasn't here? Like, what would he be doing if I was gone? You know what I mean? Like, if I was on a vacation or just not here in this world, what would you be doing to solve the problem? He, I think he, I feel like I need to teach him some, he needs to learn. He needs to learn how to fix this stuff on his own because, you know, once in a while going over there and helping, but for every single day this week almost for something to be happening, and my dad's not like around the corner, you know, he's 20, 25 minutes away. Yeah, so I have that still to deal with. Um, he's supposed to call me when he gets home. If he's home early enough, I'm going to go over there today, try to get it taken care of. Um, my job tomorrow doesn't start until 3 p.m. my time, so I have the morning. So tomorrow, I'll also present that to him. Like, I have until 3 o'clock that I can come over and try to troubleshoot this. I even tried to look online and get the program. He has a program called Open Apache, which is, I want to say it's a Microsoft program. And what is happening is my stepbrother, the documents he's been printing from his email are Microsoft Word documents. My dad does not have Microsoft Word. So what is happening is these documents are opening up in the open Apache thing. And 
first of all, I think that's one problem is that, you know, it's not the same program that it was originated in. So a workaround that I did find today was that you could export your document as a PDF and then print that. Because when I went into the Apache program, I couldn't find like any option to like look at the page setup where you can make sure to change like uncheck shrink to fit and all that stuff. Um, one thing I'm also going to do is there is an option in the HP Smart app to troubleshoot the printer. So I'm probably also going to do that and um, see if that does anything. But that's something like that little troubleshooting thing. I need to show my dad that and have that stick in his brain because he needs to be able to take care of some of this stuff on his own, I feel like. So fingers crossed. Um, and you know, and I also, I literally now literally like pray to God or just sit and say, what are you trying to show me by this happening? What are, what are you trying to teach me or show me by my dad's printer not working all these days in a row? What, what lesson, what am I, what am I being taught here? And just waiting for an answer, <laughs> you know? Okay, so the release paper, we'll get off that now. That's all that's happened, you know, with that kind of stuff. The release paper that I have on here is from a store on Etsy. I have it linked in the description box below of every video now for the last couple weeks. And I'm trying to think if there was something else that somebody consistently asks me. Oh, one lesson I learned. I learn lessons every day. I have had multiple people various times when I upload a video say there's no sound. Number one, what is happening is when YouTube is processing a video in HD, it processes it in SD, which is standard definition. So it processes it in SD first, and then the HD takes longer. What is happening is when people say there's no sound, they must be trying to watch the video in HD, and so it's not fully processed yet. So a light bulb went off in my head yesterday. When I upload a video, normally I would just set, select automatically make it public when it's done uploading. Now what I do, because the processing for HD can sometimes take a half hour or 45 minutes, depending on how long your video is, when I see that pop up, like how long the time is going to be, I set my video, I just schedule my video to go up an hour later. So that issue should never happen again, hopefully. Because you do not know how annoyed I am when someone says no sound. There's sound. Trust me, there's sound. I think there's only been one time, and I don't know why, there was no sound in a video. Because when you record, I record on my cell phone. It automatically records my voice. So, just also saying that. Okay, so let's talk Diamond Art Club for a second. So yesterday, I don't know if you guys are a member of the Diamond Art Club's VIP group. Um, anyone who purchased a diamond painting from Diamond Art Club can become a member of that group. There are a lot of people in there, and there's a lot of wonderful information and all of that. Someone yesterday... And I think the post is still up there. All they said was, I really love this painting that came in stock, but I can't afford it. They, I don't know if they said, I can't afford it right now, or I can't afford it until my next payday. And they just said, I hope it's in stock when I'm able to afford it. Now, Diamond Art Club does offer through one of their payment options. I want to say it's Sezzle or something like that. There's something where you can make payments. Ooh, I finished all the black. Let's go. I always do all the black in a section first. I don't know why. Um, there is an option where you can make like four payments or something like that. Now, I've never used that, so I don't know if it actually holds the kit for you while you're making those payments. I'm, it would have to, right? 
So, okay, what color am I gonna do? Let's do this S symbol, which is what? Um, someone posted that, and then Diamond Art Club came back and responded and said, we have plenty in stock, so it should be there. And I think the person came back and said, thank you so much. And then Diamond Art Club came back and said, you know what? We're just going to give you the diamond painting. It's on the house. And I read that. And while that is extremely generous of Diamond Art Club, and that's just the kind of company they are, in my opinion, I thought to myself, ooh, that's going to open Pandora's box of people then posting and asking for kits. And while I went to bed after I saw that post and I didn't, see any other posts like that I think that is what happened because when I was having lunch today and looking on Facebook and all that someone had posted can we please stop with the I can't afford this post basically in a roundabout way begging Diamond Art Club to give them a kit and it had a lot of comments on it so um, I feel for people that can't afford what they want to get as far as crafts. Um, there are There is a Facebook group called, I want to say it's called DAC Share the Love, where people do donate and give away things. I know that I have given away a lot of diamond paintings and different things on my channel. Um, I am in a position right now to be able to do that, so I'm, I'm very glad when I can do that. I also know what it's like to not be able to afford something, to be broke, to have $5 in your checking account until payday. Um, I know what that's like, and it is pretty painful, especially with um, Diamond Art Club kits when they go out of stock so quickly. But if it's not marked, you know, limited edition or something like that, it will come back in stock. They do restock it because they do realize how much we love these kits. So, yeah, that was, I thought, ooh, that, that's a really difficult thing. Um, very generous of Diamond Art Club, but just opened the gates, right? It's so funny. So when I'm looking at this through the viewfinder, because I can see what you guys are seeing, I can see the beautiful flower. I'm looking at it, Literally, it's probably only a foot from my face, if that. When I was doing this part the other day, I'm just diamond painting away. This was Sunday. And it's just like when you're stitching and when you're looking at something up really close. It took me stepping back, like, to the door. And I was like, oh, that's part of the butterfly. Like, sometimes you really can't see it until you step away. And good God, it is windy AF outside. Um, I don't know what it is about where we live now. It's windy like every day. Every day. I don't live in Chicago. Okay. I'm trying to think. Of, is there anything else I want to talk about before we... Half hour in and we're just getting to the topic. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So, the post that I saw that has so many comments, what part do you hate most about cross-stitching? I will give you mine first, and I'm sure I will agree with some of these. Um, number one, I'm not a big fan of backstitch. It does, it is like magic though. Like there are some things, it's like the power of backstitch where you're seeing a blob and then you put in some backstitch and it's a face or it's a whatever. I don't like it, but I will do it in a project. And sometimes too much backstitch, I've been deterred from stitching something. My second thing is white floss. I hate stitching with white or even light colored. Like in the Valentine piece that I'm stitching, there's a light pink. And I think it's just the way light hits light colored floss. Even with one strand. Now, mind you, it's right up close to my face. You can't tell when I, when I you know, back up from it. But um, it just looks messy. I don't like that. All right, what color now? Maybe I'll do this one. Look, it's only a couple. What's that one? 
If you hear this squeaking, it's my chair. My chair likes this squeak. Five. Can I tell you that I want that credenza like yesterday? There was a post I saw last night. Oh my God, we'll talk about that for a second. There was a post last night where someone came home from like vacation and they had their credenza. So then of course, a hundred people are asking about it. It was in the Diamond Art Club VIP group. They placed their order last August and they just got it. I was like, no. And now when people are placing orders, some people are being told March, which is what I was told when I changed mine to the 60 drawer, to the 60 tray thing. Some people now are being told August because apparently, and I didn't know this, they are having some supply chain issues. And I thought, oh man, I really want that credenza. Maybe I'll have it by my birthday, May. We're gonna be on a cruise for my birthday. So I hope it doesn't come here when I'm not here. That Our neighbor gets our mail when we're gone. So that won't be a problem, but. All right, what's that arrow? 27. Where's 27? Um, Bill thinks, so where I'm going to put that credenza is on the shelf that's right next to my, the shelf that's like attached to my drafting table. Bill thinks it's not going to fit and that he's going to have to build a new like tabletop for it. I said, well, and cause he can do that. There was only three of those. So I just dipped right into the container to get them. Um, but I'm like, well, we just need to wait. And I actually even changed the colors that I wanted. I originally was going to get purple. I actually got pink for like the decal and the knobs and the numbers and all that. So I changed that. I haven't changed, I'm not changing anything else because it's just going to keep pushing it back. Um, but yeah, they told this woman that ordered hers today, it was going to be August. She was going to get it. I was like, oh my God. But it will be worth it. For sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, let's do Y so I can fill in the rest of her lips because that's bugging me a little bit. Um, Y, 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 18. So I started reading two new books. Yes, I'm reading two books at a time because one book is like a religious book and the other book is um, a series. It reminds me a little bit of Pretty Little Liars. It's called, wait a minute, I can actually look. What's it called? It is called They All Had a Reason. It's on Kindle Unlimited and it's actually a series of six books. Jill sent me the link and I started reading it and it's a young adult series. Um, the Queen Bee at a high school gets murdered and it's about, I guess, solving that. I like it so far. It's very easy to read. The other book I'm reading is a book that was recommended um, in one of Joyce Meyer's videos. It is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. Now that is not on Kindle Unlimited and it is also not available at my library. I have some Kindle credits, so I'm reading this sample of it right now. When I get to the point where I have to purchase it, I think I am going to buy it because it's about, they say the number one problem in the world today is we're always hurrying. And so far what I've read, I really like it. It makes sense because I find when I hurry to do things. I am stressed, I am anxious, and I tend to make more mistakes with something when I'm hurrying. And I do that a lot with work. So I really try to just take a breath and slow down. And I, I will hurry all the time in the house. Like I will cut corners and I will bang a shoulder or bang a leg and then I have a bruise. And Bill's like, where'd you get that bruise? And I'm like, I would probably did it in the house. I mean, that happens all the time. So I'm reading those two books and enjoying them very much. I finished um, the Kimberly Bell book, The Personal Assistant, really liked it. And I've also read like two little short novellas sort of um, by Jessica Simpson, which I actually really liked them. So it says I've read five books, but I've only read probably 
two or three full like novels. It all counts. What's it matter anyway? The list is arbitrary anyway, just for me, right? Just for you, just for if you're keeping the reading challenge. But yeah, I read every day. And like I said, I read the Bible every day. Someone commented last night and said that they have noticed a change in me in a good way over the past year. They said, I can't remember the last time you cussed. And you're exactly right. I really feel like I've had some events that have happened in my life in the past two months, some personal things that a handful of people know about. Um, you know, nothing horrible, but things that really affected me. And it brought me to back to the Bible. Reading the Bible and writing in my journal. And I've written in my journal every day. I'm going to show you how much I've written. I've written in it every day. Look, this is, whoops, sorry. This is how much I've written. I mean, I have filled this much of the book. Can you see it? I That is the longest that I have written in a journal in a long, long time since I was probably a teenager. And I'm so glad because it lets me get the thoughts down on paper and out of my head. And then I figure that's one part of my legacy I can pass on when I'm gone and somebody can pick up those journals and... Let's hope I, you know, live another 40 years, something like that. Somebody could pick up and say, wow, in 2023, this was happening. Or you could even look at your own stuff down the line, five years down the line and think, wow, why was I so um, upset about that? Because that doesn't matter a lick of nothing right now, right? 13, 13, 13, show your face. Show your face. <laughs> That's what's going to be great about the credenza is having none of these numbers are in order because I did them as I came upon the symbols at the very beginning. And I'll be able to put them in order and be able to easily find the tray that I want. Now, someone made a comment about the tray is trays are pretty big. I'm okay with that because it'll fit like a whole tr a whole thing of a whole pack of diamonds. I don't mind these green trays. They've they've served me well for this entire diamond painting. Yeah, I don't mind them at all. Okay, so let's get back to the cross stitch thing now that we're I've chitty chatted just random tangents. Okay. So what part do you guys hate most about cross stitching? Tell me down below. Now, someone said so a lot of people commented backstitching. I glanced over the comments, so a lot of people said backstitching. Working with white, French knots, someone else said that. I learned many, many years ago. I don't like French knots either, and I think I don't like them not because I can't do them. I don't like them because they don't look uniform. I can't get mine to look uniform. So the easy fix, beads. Beads are shiny and pretty, and they're all the same size just about. So whenever there's a French knot, I do a bead. And if it is like eyes of a creature or a person, you can use petite beads. I have done that too for eyes, because who wants big bulging eyes in something, right? So just keep that in mind. Beads, easiest solution. Someone also says you do colonial knots, and I've tried that. Someone said working on black fabric. Yeah, dark fabric can be a killer. Um, a tip, though, is to have like a white cloth underneath of you. And you know what I've learned, too? Stitch, especially stitching on perforated paper. Stitching on the white paper, to be able to see the holes clearly, I need something dark underneath of me. So my pajama pants are usually dark, and I, or I have a dark blanket that I keep up here. Wow, I'm like not, I'm, I'm trying to leave like these big sections for last and just get done all of the smaller colors. Um, but yeah, just those little couple tips right there. Okay, what's K? It's a purple one. Purple, purple, purple. It's the first color I ever started working with on this diamond painting. Now, what's going to be really nice about the credenza too and this, I don't save my extra diamonds. I did in the very beginning when I started diamond painting before realizing that every kit comes with more than enough. And Diamond Art Club gives you, I want to say, and don't quote me on this exactly, 
but they give you a good 20 to 30% more than what you need. Maybe. I've never run out of a diamond. I've never run out on a Diamond R Club kit. And so at the end, to, you know, kit down something, all I do is get a trash can and just dump all of these diamonds in there. And it's going to be so nice with these because it literally is just taking the trays out, dumping, putting it back, taking the trays out, dumping, because the trays on the credenza are numbered and they have like a little knob and, oh, I just can't wait. I can't wait. And um, one of my friends, Stephanie, um, she's Mariah's mom. If you guys know her on Facebook, she's such a wonderful human being. Um, she ordered a credenza and her and I have been talking back and forth about it. And uh, she's so very excited to get hers too. So I can't wait to see hers. Trust me when I get it. Wait a minute, let me find that symbol. P, 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 23. When I get it, I am going to do a big unboxing on my channel where I literally show you the box and then unbox it. Like I'm not going to take it. I'm going to take it out to show you how amazing they pack it because I did see a video on Facebook where someone showed theirs and unpackaged it. They pack it so well. Like every corner is covered with foam and um, nothing came broken. Like, you, you know, it's shipping from the Philippines. I can't wait. Can't wait to get it and show you guys and start using it. I am definitely going to be on my next diamond painting before I get it for sure. I'll be on Queen of Hearts. That's the next one I'm going to do. I love that artwork so much. Oh, that reminds me too, a Diamond Art Club thing real quick. They have a new poll up to vote on um, Christmas or holiday images. And one of them was a Hannah Lynn. So you know I voted for that one. I voted for a handful of them. There were a ton of landscapes and they're not necessarily my taste. I'm very happy though for the people that love landscapes because there was a ton. 22, 22, 22. Um, but there was a couple that I voted for. So, and you know, they're already thinking ahead for the holiday, for Christmas already, because, oh, there's a blue one that got stuck in there. Bye-bye. Um, they're already thinking ahead because you have to start getting them hand charted and in production. And if people want Christmas ones done by Christmas, you know what I mean? It Realistically, for most of us, I feel like it takes months to do a diamond painting. So you got to get crack a lacking on it if you want it done. Like, I really want a Christmas one done by Christmas this time. Either the Christmas Irish Irish Christmas Fay or the um, Chris that I have where the woman is Santa. I really love that one. I really need to do that one. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. Well, it was only like one second for you guys, but it's been about two hours since I stopped the video. So when I stopped the video, I meant, let's take a drink of water. When I stopped the video, my dad called and he said, well, the printer is not even, it says it can't recognize the printer. It's not letting me print at all. I'm like, Ugh. so got in the car, went over there, which took me about a half hour because rush hour, and it's funny because when I pulled out of my street, I was behind this um, like big truck that had a bunch of cars on it. And he was going, now the speed limit on like their main road is 40. He was going 15. And I was like, all right, God, I hear you. I hear you. You are trying to get me to slow down, right? I, I actually like started laughing like it was just really comical. So I got to my dad's and I did the troubleshooting thing and it fixed it. So I had him watch me do it again. And he wrote the steps down because I said, something happens. You do this first before you call me and say, come over here. So I was over there, but then my stepmother got home. And so I was talking to her for a little bit and uh, I got home about 15 minutes ago and I had mail to go through. So I had purchased from a subscriber, Judy, um, the Dutch treat, 
the doodler frame, you know, for perforated paper. And I wanted bigger rods that hold the paper. So I bought Stony Creek, had them for sale. And I, they came in the mail today. So I was playing with those for a little bit and I think it's gonna work. Um, it is easy to just hold the paper in your hand, but sometimes it's nice to, and the, 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 the rods are 15 inches long and the way they sit in the frame, I can put the frame on either side of my legs. So it like sits, yeah, I think it's gonna work. If not, I can just hold the paper in my hand, not a big deal. All right, let's do the H, what's that? So I also got in the mail um, a new headband. Now I have had a love-hate relationship with headbands. Um, you guys have seen, like I used to have a huge collection of headbands and I gave a lot away, threw a lot away, just old ones. I have been looking for ones that resemble sunglasses because I can pull my hair back with sunglasses and I really like how it looks. So I actually put that in Google and this headband came up on Amazon that is like the sides are hinged. And I was like, all right, it was, I wanna say it was like 20 bucks. It wasn't like it was cheap. Well, I put a bunch in my wish list, like two other ones. And I got the one in the mail today and I'm like, all right, let's try it. Oh my God, I love it. First of all, I don't really feel like I have a headband on. Um, I will link it down below if I remember. I like it, I like it. So I'm hoping that it's going to work. Like I said, I haven't worn it but 10 minutes. So we'll see how I feel after wearing it for couple of hours you know what I mean but so far so good and um, yeah so let's get back more into these what do you hate about cross stitch all right so we got through back stitches French knots somebody said they hate half stitches um, Ooh, metallic thread haha <laughs> well Petite treasure braid, Rainbow Gallery Petite treasure braid. I'm telling you, that is the ticket. All right, when I miscount and it's too late to fix it. Oh yeah, there is sometimes where you have to fudge it because there's like no going back, you know? You're not tearing out an entire project. Someone said it's too, if it's many variations of green grass or lots of different blue sky, then I'm not too worried if one or six stitches get misplaced. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. What I hate most is figuring out what to stitch. Yeah, there. sometimes I, I try to really let it come to me naturally. You know what I mean? Sometimes it doesn't happen like that, but most of the time I can just let it speak to me what I'm going to stitch next. A lot of, lot of frogging. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Nobody likes that either. Okay. What's this other pink one? The equal sign. My chair is so squeaky. It's insane. Um, the patience it takes to complete a project. Yeah. You know, cross stitch definitely isn't something that's a quick hobby. Diamond painting is much quicker. You get much more um, immediate satisfaction out of that because think about it okay if you think about one diamond representing a stitch you lay down a diamond in two seconds you're not completing a stitch in two seconds no nah. much quicker and sparkly <laughs> confetti yeah where you're changing you do two stitches of one color two stitches of this color and you say so you're changing your threads all the time that could be a pain Miscounting, yeah. Making a mistake in row two, but not realizing it until row 29. Or my favorite is when you're going along, and I find I do this more when I work with two strands of thread. 
you somehow you got a knot in the back and you don't realize it until like 15 stitches later like mother mm, yeah um, sometimes what I just try to do is bury the thread underneath other threads or just trim it where it's at and hope nothing comes out sometimes it doesn't matter but it is a pain when I don't have enough length for a few stitches, so I have to start a new length, yes. I, I That is, it's not what I hate most, but it is quite annoying. Or when my needle comes out of the thread. I do that quite a bit. Uh, charts that are printed too small. Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't even think of that. I think that's one reason why I'm so drawn to... Primer's Cottage Stitches charts because the stitches are nice and big. I can't do the small, tiny charts anymore. And I find that I am also drawn to color charts now because it's so much easier to see where you're stitching and I don't have to highlight it. I don't highlight colored charts. Like I don't highlight any of the Primer's Cottage Stitches ones. And that's a, that's a very new thing for me because I used to be someone who highlighted everything i haven't stitched with a black and white chart though in a long long time um threading the needle yeah i don't like that either sometimes it can be a pain but just with one strand i usually don't have a problem undoing mistakes not having enough time to cross stitch yeah i hear you on that a lot a lot of people are saying back stitch there's a back stitch is getting a ugh. working with metallic threads old eyes yeah i i wear readers now it just makes it easier i only need 1.25 strength which i'm very thankful for but i will i will wear readers as long as i possibly can to, to cross stitch and diamond paint and do all that Someone said, I always backstitch as I finish an area, makes it come alive, eager to get to the next section. You have to be careful doing that only because you don't want to put backstitch where there's going to be a stitch and you haven't stitched it yet, if that makes sense, because then the stitch will cover the backstitch. Wow, I hope that made sense. <laughs> I said the word stitch and backstitch a lot in that sentence. But you know what I mean? You're supposed to do the backstitching after the stitches are done. Okay, let's see. Wow, a lot of people are saying the same thing. Frogging, knots, backstitch. When I discover there is a thread missing in my collection. Yeah, like you kit up something and you have everything but one thread. Yeah, I hear you on that. A lot of people are saying the same thing. Like, it literally backstitch is like 90% of the comments. Okay, so I think I'm going to end it here because it's almost 5 o'clock here. I still need to do something for work. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, diamond paint with me. I enjoyed getting some done because now I'll be able to stitch tonight at bedtime. And tomorrow, my job does not start until 3 p.m., so I will definitely be able to get... I'm, say, I'm saying that, and I'm, I'm testing the universe, aren't I? Um, you would think that I would have time, God willing, to get some crafting done tomorrow before my job starts. And I found out today that it's only going to be two of us tomorrow, so I'm hoping giving that it's starting at 3 p.m., that's only going to be like an hour or so, which two of us wouldn't have any trouble handling that. So, fingers crossed, right? And yeah, we're having spaghetti tonight for dinner. Love spaghetti. But okay, guys, I hope you're all having a good week and a good Thursday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.